Hey, I'm Enzo. I'm one of the co-founder at June. So today I'm going to share about customer support. This really was the main topic of our latest board meeting. And we're learning a lot. And I thought I would just share openly about what we're currently going through. And maybe these reflections would help you out there. So when we started June, our vision was to build the most intuitive analytics product for B2B SaaS. And so from the get-go, we've been very intentional that we didn't want to have a single person dedicated to support. We wanted everyone to do support. So we didn't want to have a specialist or a generalist that would take that hat. Instead of that, we wanted our product engineers to cover that job. And so there were three reasons why we decided to do that. So the first reason really came from us wanting to close the gaps. Every time there would be a bug, every time there would be a product confusion, we wanted the pass of information to be as fast as possible. And by having the engineers in the chat and responding to customers' tickets live, we assumed there was going to be the fastest way to respond and move fast. Really, that trick came from Steve Jobs at Apple. He was very famous for putting a phone on the desk of the engineers so that customer success could reach out right away to them if there was bugs with the product. And this would give a lot of responsibilities to the engineers. The second reason is that we wanted to build a very intuitive product and we still want to do that. So, you know, we believe analytics is very complicated. It's too complex. It shouldn't be. And we believe by closing these gaps, we're actually delivering this truly self-serve product that the world deserves. We don't believe that having to talk to someone or having to read a help article or having to read a white paper is a great experience when you experience analytics. And this requires closing the gaps. And the last reason was staying close to you guys. We've seen many, many founding teams that lose of sight their users and start to build things that people don't want and didn't ask for. And so one of the ways that we ensured we were staying super, super close to you, to the, our users and so on on an ongoing basis was really to avoid having an intermediary layer that we then have to fight to bubble up the feedback and prioritize the feedback. And so, you know, um, trying to get the whole funding team involved in the chat, involved in this conversation, involved in the support was the way that we found to achieve that. Okay, so this is the theory. What did happen next? So like any tech companies, we have limited engineering resources. We've reached a point where basically we always had one product engineer who was on call or on duty, and we would rotate this responsibility so that it doesn't feel like a burden, but it more feels like, okay, this is my week, I'm going to eat that frog. And um, we also adopted a few processes. So we took that framework that we were using at Intercom called P0, P1, P2, and so on, where basically it would be super, super clear what you would have to start with. And and we also started to celebrate when we were closing these P2s, P1s, and so on. So every day, every week, people would really say like, okay, this is how many P's I have closed, and people would cheer up and so on, which was, I think, fairly, fairly cool. The problem is that even though we were doing that and really getting more efficient, the number of conversations kept increasing. So in the last 12 months, the number of conversations has increased by 5x. And this is including all the efficiencies and improvements that we've done on the customer success side. So uh, we have you know, a bot that answers a lot of the questions that you may have, especially if they're narrow. We have also an FAQ, which is very, very complete. And uh, of course, the product is a lot more intuitive than it was. But nevertheless, this keeps growing up. And there is a couple of reasons for that. But the main one basically is that sometime people need to talk to a human. Sometime you need to talk to a human. And, you know, there could be multiple reasons for that. One could be that, you know, it's very specific or, and, and this is not documented or um, the way around, it's very generic. People have like a very broad question about, you know, maybe how they should approach their analytics, kind of the philosophy. And they want to talk to a human for that. And that makes total sense. I would expect exactly the same, you know. The other thing is that as we push new thing in June, we're introducing new confusion, new bugs, right? And, and people use this channel, the direct chat to actually, you know, let us know about it. So, you know, we just really understood that sometime you need to talk to your man and no matter how efficient we would become with our automated support, we would still have this channel open. We also, to be fully transparent, cherish that channel because it gives us a lot of color, right? Like when people talk to you, you can get a lot of signals that you don't get from a ticket or from, you know, just people responding with thumb up or thumb down to your FAQ. So we really love it. And, you know, we decided that, of course, we would never drop it. So 
we started to reach a breaking point. And so the epiphany we had, and in retrospect, it sounds so, so dumb, uh, was from our latest board meeting. So we've been lucky enough to have a couple of investors, VC investors that I've worked with many, many B2B SaaS in the past. And so um, kind of like the epiphany was this sentence, he said that when a company has thousands of users and hundreds of paying customers with your ICV, I don't think it's stupid to have a full-time support dedicated person. And again, in retrospect, it sounds so obvious, right? Like it sounds so dumb, but we've been pushing back a lot on that because of the, the philosophy of the company, right? Where, where we were lucky enough is that this investor has worked with a lot of companies we admire, including companies like Typeform that really scale from the ground up, a very intuitive product that could be self-served by, by the millions, right? And so we, we kind of ask, ask him, is this how it works in this in these larger companies? And it turns out it, it's the case. It's the case. Like even the most intuitive product out there have a customer support team that is dedicated to answering these edge cases or situations where you need a human interaction. So we've made a big step into that direction and I'm really excited about that. So this is our current process now. As you can tell, we used to have only one on-call engineer. We then automated as much as we could. And so now we have this CSM who just joined us. He's an amazing, amazing person. And I'm so excited to have this person joining us. It really feels that every time you're going to push the door of June, there will be this extremely smart, extremely friendly and welcoming person looking at you with a smile, willing to answer any question you may have. And this, I believe, is really something that any company should have. And, you know, we're trying to be as human as possible and put as much human touch as we can into our product since we hired that new dedicated support person. What happened is that we're a lot more efficient. Basically, all the conversation are rooted to that person. He will make the triage. He will figure out what he can answer right away or pass to the engineers. Uh, users get a faster answer, which I think is super important. This is making our engineers a lot more efficient, meaning they're able to really focus on where they have a core competency, which is, you know, engineering work most of the time and uh, closing faster the gaps. In short, this is more efficient for everyone. Uh, I'm really excited about this new phase for June. I think we are finally being very realistic about what it means to build, you know, an intuitive B2B SaaS. It doesn't mean no human interaction. We're still dedicated more than ever to make the most intuitive and delightful product analytics for B2B SaaS out there. But also at the same time, we are being realistic about you know what kind of human interactions needs to exist for a business to, to survive. And, and I think we're growing up, we're maturing as a company, and I'm really proud that you know we're able to change our mind on this kind of topic. I think only the stupid people don't change their mind. Um, that's that's a super exciting moment and uh, and I'm super excited we have this new amazing person who just joined us. Right, so that's about it for our experience. If you are some sort of B2B SaaS with a PLG motion, I hope you found some value in this uh, video. I think the timing of when you should recruit a full-time support dedicated person really varies on you know the industry you're in, kind of the stage you're at, also your price point. Maybe also the you know complexity of your product. So what I share today maybe doesn't apply to everyone, but kind of the logic and the you know the building blocks I think should come together pretty nicely for for any business. So thanks so much for listening to this video. I hope there was some nuggets of value again. And um, until next time, thanks so much for listening and have a great summer. Take care. Bye.